Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I am having the A plus of years of experience uh, into training and development. So currently I am working in corporate sector as a corporate trainer in two Java technology. Mm -hmm. So that's about my experience. Uh, then I am getting into the demo. Okay. So today we will be discussing the core Java. The core Java, so in my discussion we will be answering some questions like uh, so what Java is, mm -hmm. likewise where Java is seen and how Java came into picture. Why Java? So here we will be looking into the answers for these questions in this demo. Mm -hmm. So when you get into the what Java is, Java is an object oriented programming language. So object, uh, object represents any real time entity like which you see. Uh, for example, my laptop, mobile phone, uh, the headphones which I have just tried to adjust, uh, room, uh, the ring which we wear, uh, which we wear to my to our finger. So all these are objects, real time entities. So these objects have their own properties. Uh, we will be looking into these properties in our upcoming sessions. What they are, what they represent, everything. So for now, these objects are real time entities. And when a programming language depends upon these real-time entities in making a software uh, which uh, simulates the uh, real-life scenarios would be easy. So object-oriented programming language helps making software better that would suit the real-time needs. That is why uh, this Java is popular. Likewise, another reason why it is popular is it is platform independent. So platform independent in, in the sense you can write a Java program on Windows environment, take that program and then execute on Linux environment. Over there also we can find the results. So I was telling you that uh, it is an open source product. Yes. It means it is freely available. You don't need to pay for the license of this Java product. Mm -hmm. So these three reasons are the major things which gives the popularity for Java programming language. Then when you come to the next question, where Java is seen? So to discuss this question, we need to get into the technologies of Java. Mm -hmm. Technologies. There are three technologies. That is J2SE, then J2EE, J2ME. J2SE stands for Java 2. 2 stands for version number. Mm -hmm. Likewise, J2E stands for Java 2 Enterprise Edition. Then J2ME stands for Java 2 Micro Edition. Micro Edition or Mobile Edition. Both the same. So here you can see J2SE. Uh, it's a, I mean, uh, Java 2, version 2 Standard Edition where with this Java J2SE you can develop desktop applications. Desktop applications for example uh, a notepad on your Windows environment or a calculator program with your Windows environment. So MS Office. So all these are desktop applications. So you can develop such web, uh, desktop applications using J2SE. Likewise J2E which stands for Java 2 Enterprise Edition used to develop web applications and enterprise applications. 
web applications are applications that could execute on browser that is on internet so whatever the yahoo mail gmail whatever you see those are web applications actually and enterprise applications enterprise applications are applications which has more complex logic in it so and they are used to they are used by very huge organizations uh, to perform their uh, business tasks so it has complicated business rules and the complex logic uh, inside that that is why we call them as enterprise applications then when you go for mobile edition so mobile edition that is mobile applications so nowadays the mobiles the smartphones are powered by java it means you can see java in those so you can develop mobile applications using this j2 mv version so here the i told you that j j2 2 stands for version nowadays mm -hmm. the same j2 ac is known as jsc simply they have removed the version number mm, likewise jee -E. likewise mm -hmm. jme so jme so we have updated with uh, uh, various things and they have changed the uh, the version number so j means the same but j is presently called j to ac is the previous name for the same thing okay. so that is where you see in desktop application and web applications and enterprise applications and mobile application yes. where you can see the technology so the next that is how java came to answer this i would to take you to 1990s timeline uh before this can we take a step back so where uh, you said java is a platform for microsystems uh ek we do need a uh, jvm to run the java program right even if we have compiled absolutely we need a jvm so how can it yes, be even you have compiled to its look uh, over there i told you windows environment linux environment here in windows environment you will be writing a program and generate some byte code we say that is an intermediary code you take that code and execute on linux environment i told you in linux environment there will be linux specific jvm you don't need to change any instructions which you have written in your program the only thing is there will be platform specific jvm windows windows specific jvm linux linux specific jvm like the solaris unix and so on operating systems will have their specific jvm so that the code written by you would be executed by that jvm jvms are platform dependent but java technology or java programming language is not platform dependent okay okay uh, that's uh, regarding jvm we shall discuss uh, in this uh, the last question that is why java is okay. is that clear so jvm sort platform specific but not the java technology yeah i missed all that in you need to have a name in between when your voice started breaking and oh, 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 oh okay okay no problem no problem uh as yes, i am getting into the timeline 1990s timeline sun microsystems sun okay. so, microsystems launched a project so the project name was green project it was under the uh, hands of james gosling a person who used to manage that project james gosling was the team lead for that project so this project intention or objective is to develop a programming language develop a programming language with which they had an intention to write the softwares that would add intelligence to consumer electronics okay. their intention was to develop a programming language so to develop a programming language which would add intelligence to consumer electronics so here their intention was to develop a programming language and with that programming language 
uh, they thought of writing programs, softwares that could add intelligence to consumer electronics. So how this adding intelligence to consumer electronics uh, is? Let me give by example. Uh, uh, the televisions that were launched uh, at the beginning, they were used to display black and white color. Likewise, the channels were very few. So, uh, during those days, uh, when the channels were very few, we, there was a knob on that television where we used to rotate that knob to move from one channel to another channel. Mm -hmm. Later on, technology improved and remote controls came into existence. So remote controls. With the help of a remote control, now you are, we are able to browse through hundreds of channels. So you will be just pressing the channel number on the remote control, suppose 124 channel. You will be just pressing 124 buttons over there the remote control will receive the input given by that user and will act accordingly and displace the channel number 124 on television. So you can move from 124 channel to some other channel. The remote control has a software inside that. So which is intelligently accepting the user's input and acting accordingly. So James Lasling team had uh, such an idea of uh, developing a software which would add intelligence to consumer electronic devices like the remote control which has a software inside that. So they came out and they continued their research and development on the same. Then in 1993 they came out with a programming language called Oak. So Oak programming language. And they started writing some programs and tested. So again in 1994, the research and development went on the same. 1990, 1993, 1994. So here, uh, in the rest of the world, during the same time, what happened was, in 1993, internet came into picture. So internet came into picture. And on this internet, the research and development was going on. So internet then in 1994, 1994, research and development on internet. Uh, this James Gosling team, in the timeline of 1993, 1994, they started writing programs. So they started writing programs and they tried to execute those programs on browser. Uh, we know well that internet can be served using a browser. So here the Oak programming language, whatever they have developed. So the program written in that programming language, uh, yet the results given by that programs were best suited on internet. For example, and they were able to run some animations on internet, that is on browser, that is some motion pictures they are able to run mm -hmm. on browser. And they found that uh, this programming language has given best results on internet. So here, if you observe in 1995, 1995, so here the research and development on internet went in this Sun Microsystems timeline with 1995 they renamed the same old programming language to Java and they renamed because there was already a programming language with the same name OAK in the world so they renamed it to Java then in the timeline of internet if you observe here in 1995, Java, so Java programs were tried to execute on internet and they found that uh, it was giving best results with the internet. Uh, let me explain one example here. 
So once Java is introduced on internet, then the things became dynamic on internet. Let me explain you what this dynamism is.